So there's one thing that sword collectors don't get to do very often, and that is a grab bag. Uh, the idea of putting up some money to get some random items. You don't really know what you're going to get, but they're going to be along the lines of things that you might be interested in. Uh, the reason that is, is obviously for, for the most part expense. Now, there are a few websites that do grab bag type deals. Uh, one of the most common ones being uh, Bud K. Nobody really wants Bud K products. And there's another site that does it. Uh, they call themselves Swords of Might. Uh, they have grab bags that have various ranges in, their, in terms of price. So you can kind of choose, as it were, what uh, price range you want to go into. And the idea is the higher the price range, potentially the better the products you're going to get or the more products you're going to get, obviously. Uh, the biggest problem with this is that, well, for the most part, the way these grab bags actually work from a reseller standpoint is they're just trying to move products. Sometimes it's items they need to liquidate. Uh, they just need to get rid of inventory. Sometimes it's items that they get as a part of a promotional thing and then they're just taking up space so they want to kind of get rid of them and they can make a little bit of money in doing so by selling it via the grab bag. Uh, now, there aren't many reviews online of the Swords of Might grab bag. Uh, there are some on the website that you can actually do the order from, and there was one rather comprehensive uh, blog posting about what was inside of it. However, I don't think the person who did the blog entry necessarily had a, a huge background in swords, and so didn't really, uh, wasn't really able to express the quality of the items that they were getting. So I'm going to do an unboxing of the Swords of Might grab bag. Now this is the upper end at $200. It doesn't go any higher than that. Uh, the idea here being is that you can see what I'm going to get in this box and uh, based on what you see, you can pretty much know, uh, since this is the top tier, it's probably not going to get any better than this if you're doing any of the tiers below it or even the tier that it's at. Now the way I'm going to do this video is going to be a couple of parts. Uh, the first part will just be the unboxing as I reveal what all is inside of the box. This isn't going to be a standard unboxing video but I will go through all the items that are in the box. And then the second part of the video, which I will likely record much later after I do some research, will be to go through all the items, look at them on the website, look at their prices, uh, and actually do a comparison to see if you're actually getting the value that they're claiming uh, in the grab bag. Now my guess is uh, they're going to try to at least hit the, the $200 mark with the grab bag uh, because it would be um, very, very uh, lousy business practices to do otherwise. Uh, but however, I, I don't really have high hopes for this. While uh, Swords of Might does actually sell some decent products, they even sell Dark Sword Armory swords, I don't really expect to get those type of things in this box. And and ultimately what I, what I really expect to get here is a lot of sword-like objects, a lot of decorative pieces, but we'll find out. So let's get started. This is a very big box. It's actually coming in at about 15 pounds is what I was able to weigh it at. And then I've cleared off the helmets and everything on this chest that's normally in front of me in the unboxing videos I do. We're just going to go through it. All right. So a long box. It says Tenkyu. I don't know anything about this, so let's open it and see what's inside. Now, I believe in the blog posting that they had on some ends of their boxes, although I'm not seeing it on this, uh, the prices of the items listed. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to go through these things and uh, make sure I can find them on the website as best as possible and try to get the prices and we'll get a running tally. So I'm going to try to keep these things mostly intact with their boxes. Now I'm not very surprised that this is going to be a katana, just based on the brand name here. And it's wrapped in styrofoam and a little sword bag. So I'll just go ahead and set this right over there. We will see what this looks like. So this is kind of the fun part, because normally I know what I'm getting when I'm unboxing things. I have no idea what I'm getting in these cases. All right. This is less of a katana and more of what they tend to call a ninja blade. 
All right, well, that's probably strike one right there. So, I don't know much about it. I'll have to go find out more. Not super sharp. I will put this up and research it later. And we will move on to the next item in the box. I got a sword umbrella. This one's a katana version, I'm pretty sure. The sad part is I already actually have one of these. Um, it's a, a medieval broad sword umbrella. Yeah, so this is the white sword umbrella. I'm not even going to bother opening up all the way. There we go. I'll look that up later as well. It would appear that most of the things in here are being themed along the uh, Asian sword line. And this looks like a Tai Chi sword. Again, I'll have to look up information about it because I know nothing about these products that I am getting. So we'll put that up and move on to the next item. This is a giant the Alamo Bowie knife. Funny thing is, I would actually really like a Bowie knife. I have no idea what the quality of this one is. It's pretty massive. Comes with what looks like a little poster. Goodness. I'll tell you right now, it's most definitely going to be purely decorative as the most massive handle I've ever ever felt to have a handle like that on a knife is quite ridiculous kind of a cheap leather scabbard as well yeah mostly decorative the Alamo all right here is Certificate of Authenticity to prove that I, in fact, am the owner, proud owner, of the Alamo Bowie Knife. Alright, let's see what else is in there. Tilt the box up. A lot of smaller things. So we're going to go ahead and set this aside. And I have three knives here that I'm fairly certain are not going to be very good. Yeah. These are, these are those kind of cheap, quote-unquote, tactical knives. They design them to do, to be more decorative than anything. This one is an M-Tech. doesn't really say anything about it. I'll have to look up more information. This is another M-Tech. This one has a camo design. Oh dear. Look at that. That's just silly. Okay.
And this is probably the best way you could possibly end a video like this. Disappointment abounds as I get a zombie hunter pocket knife. Oh yes, that is something amazingly terrible. All right, so there you have it. That is everything that came in my grab bag box. I will go and research what the value of all these things are and research, if I can, the quality of uh, the manufacturers and those. I'm going to make a stab in the dark here and say that, honestly, this probably isn't worth it. We will find out when I, when I go dig a little bit deeper, but yeah, I would say that if this is the best they can do, um, it's really not ever worth doing. All right, so here it is. This is the result of the Sword of Might grab bag. I did the $200 option, which is their maximum option. Uh, the idea there being that if I get the most expensive version, then maybe I'll get something worth it. And anyone that is looking at what I do get will understand that that is going to be the very best of what you're probably going to get in this grab bag, keeping in mind that it's all still very random. So I'm going to go through each one of these items. I'm going to talk about uh, what they are and what their actual price value is. Uh, I will make a general note that um, while on their website they have the retail price, for the most part, all these things were actually on sale. They were much cheaper. Uh, so I'm actually going to go with the sale price because that is uh, basically the actual value of these things. Uh, and we will see what the overall tally is uh, based on the $200 price point. Uh, and then I'll actually talk about each of the items as I go through it. So the first one I'm going to speak to is actually this sword umbrella. Uh, this is called their anime sword umbrella. And I didn't bother taking it out of the box because I figure I'll just try to sell this somewhere because I'm not going to try to keep it. But it's this little white umbrella, uh, plastic handle. It's got very, very silly detailing, including, I don't know if you can see, that little tiny smiley face in the bag. Uh, yeah, it's it's a little cheap umbrella and it's not got much value to me, so I'll probably just try to get rid of it somehow. Um, the actual price on that is $17.99, so there you go. Uh, not even worth that, I would say. But okay, let's move on. Uh, the next item to cover is actually uh, this, what they are calling just the a uh, carved dragon ch tai chi sword. That means it's a jin. Uh, I believe I'm saying that correct, uh, but it's completely uh, possible that I'm mispronouncing that. And uh, it is as about as cheap as it comes. The actual retail price that they're, or you know, the retail price versus their sale price. The actual price for this thing is $24.99, so $25. Uh, the blade on it is basically nothing more than a piece of sheet steel cut into a blade shape. As you can see. It's very, very wobbly, extremely wobbly. So uh, there's not a lot to say about this one. It's definitely not gonna be usable as a sword. It's completely blunt on this side. They didn't bother giving it like any type of edge or even beveling to an edge. Uh, but overall, I would say that the best that this could be used for outside of just pure decoration would be if you wanted to practice actual Tai Chi forms with a sword. Uh, I would say that because it is spring steel, at least it won't break in basic usage. Construction is also very basic. They've got a little nut pommel. Um, the overall design of it's actually nice enough. All the detailing is, is all right. It's all very generic, very basic. Uh, they did a carved wooden scabbard and a little bit of carving in the wooden handle. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty cheap, so there's not a lot more to say about it. Uh, it's all right. Next thing I will cover is... Uh, a Ten Ryu Black Dragon, uh, they call it a Damascus, although as you'll see, the blade is actually blackened. Now if you get this in the right light, you can actually see the Damascus patterning in it a little bit. Um, that is kind of the pattern welding uh, look to it. Um, this is actually made of a high carbon steel, and so I would imagine that at the very least it is usable as a cutter. Uh, this is probably the lowest price point you could get for any type of sword like this. I am not a fan of the kind of ninja sword design because there's no historical basis for that. 
Uh, it is purely fantasy. However, it is still usable potentially as a sword. Uh, so this is probably something I'll go out and mess with periodically just for the heck of it. Uh, not really worried about messing it up or breaking it. I will say that Tenryu doesn't have the best uh, track record, as it were, for uh, swords that hold up. But they are about as cheap as you can go and still have something that might be considered a functional sword. Uh, this one specifically is priced at $69.99, so $70 for uh, this Ninjato sword, as it were. Um, yeah, not much more to say about it either. Real, very basic. I think if you had very little money to spend and you were able to buy one sword that you could actually potentially use, maybe you could go for that, but again, it's actually still pretty cheap. All right, the next thing I will cover is the Alamo Bowie knife. This was almost really cool because it's almost really cool as a Bowie knife, and I would actually appreciate this as a Bowie knife. Now, the handle is just extremely large on this. It's very hard to get your hand around, but even so, I like the design. I like the look of it, except for when you turn it around, and now it has printed on it the Alamo, and it has Jim Bowie in a little plate on the handle. It kind of ruins it, to be honest. So unless you're like a huge fan of the movie that this is based on, and you're a huge fan of Jim Bowie and Bowie Knives and the Alamo, you don't really want it as a keepsake like this. I'd much rather just have a generic Bowie knife, but oh well. Now the actual uh, price for this Bowie knife is, uh, Bowie knife is actually $77.99. So this is actually the most expensive item that came in this grab bag, beating out uh, the Ninjato um, just a little bit, just a hair. And I think that's mostly because this is meant as a collector's item. Uh, and sure, I guess, if you're really, really into this type of thing, it would be great. Uh, again, I think it's all right, but it is just a pretty generic Bowie knife. And the price increase comes from where the design comes from and the fact that they have the nameplate and uh, name of the Alamo engraved on the blade. Okay, here's a fun one. We're going to get down to the knives now. So this is the cheap stuff that they kind of settled to the bottom of the box they sent me. This is the most ridiculous thing. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I'm not going to bother keeping it. Uh, this is called the Z Hunter Glow Dot Zombie uh, Killer Knife. Or Zombie Hunter Knife. I apologize. Uh, and it's supposed to have a locking mechanism, but it doesn't. In fact, it doesn't lock very well unless you flick it. And even then, there we go, it actually kind of went. Now you can see the blade design on this is very uh, kind of silly. A lot of we really weird printing on it that is a bunch of zombie skulls and heads. The, of course, zombie green color. And a little skull on the belt clip. A uh, little biohazard sign in the handle as well. This is just the dumbest thing. Um... So again, I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but it's not exactly a keeper. Now, I do actually have a little small knife collection that I add things to uh, just because I like anything that has a blade, but this is kind of ridiculous and it's kind of a joke. Uh, I would also expect at the price point, which is $7.99, so $8, uh, this is not going to hold up really at all. Uh, this is purely for aesthetics if you're into the type of aesthetics that this is. Um, they also have this little paracord uh, wrap to it because, you know, the people who are crazy uh, zombie apocalypse survivalists that want to buy all this type of stuff got to have the paracord. So, yeah, worthless. Absolutely worthless. All right, now we're going to get to uh, the, the more... Uh, interesting knives as it were so I'm going to have to look these up real quick and alright so the urban camo one yep so uh, and I've been looking these up uh, I have all the prices listed here uh, just for my own benefit so I can tell so this is the Mtech uh, urban camo knife look at this blade Yeah, I don't. I don't understand a lot about this this knife. It's it's kind of ridiculous. 
Again, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. It's a fixed blade. It seems like it's actually rugged enough, and it doesn't really have much of an edge, but you could easily put one on it. I Again, this is a cheap knife. This comes in at $12.99. Not, I would never really buy this. Uh, I find it really quite ugly, actually. So, yet another thing I don't know what I'll do with. I'll just put it right over there. And finally, uh, this is the M-Tech Titanium Fighting Knife. So, oh boy, we're going to get really tactical here. Uh, this is what it looks like. This is at least slightly more um, toned down. The blade looks halfway decent. Again, no edge to it. Uh, you could put an edge on it. It is all one piece of metal. Uh, and the handle is actually pretty interesting, pretty nice. Um, so, I'm actually somewhat impressed with this knife as it were. Now Mtech is is kind of a brand that doesn't have uh, the greatest track record and certainly isn't known for being high value. In fact I was doing some research on them and apparently they are a pretty infamous for ripping off other people's designs which is a kind of a big no-no in the in the knife world um, because the design of your knife is kind of your signature and so they're Companies, you know, like maybe Gerber, for example, who makes a knife, and they will design it from the ground up, and they will, you know, design and construct it, and then M-Tech will come along and rip off their design and make it for a lot cheaper. So it's for people who can't afford a Gerber, I suppose. Uh, this knife came in at $13.99, so $14. Now, if you add all of that up, all of these items up, you will see that the overall value is $225.93. So we're just going to round up and say $226. So for $200, I got $226 worth of merchandise. Well, barring the knives that really weren't worth the money, and although I like the Bowie knife, it's less interesting I'm really stuck with these two swords, and of course the umbrella, but I'm not even going to count that. Uh, I'm stuck with these two swords that are at least maybe have some value in them. Uh, again, this uh, Tenryu Ninjato, mostly because it is actually potentially functional. Uh, I might go do a cut test just to see how well it holds up, but I have seen videos online of these things kind of falling apart as well. Uh, but honestly, as strange as it sounds, this Tai Chi sword, or the Jin is probably the most interesting one that I got, mostly because it made me interested in the Chinese sword, the, the, the double-edged straight sword. Um, and so I started trying to kind of do some research on it and learn a bit more about it. And I began looking up Tai Chi forms that use the sword. Uh, and I, I just looked up stuff about it because I don't have the largest interest in uh, necessarily the Chinese uh, martial culture. Um, but it was certainly interesting enough that it caught my attention and I wanted to research it more. So this, out of the, everything, this is probably my favorite thing, although it is, again, really cheap with the crazy floppy blade. Um, it's at least interesting enough that I, it'll like, likely make me want to go out and buy an actual nice version of uh, a Jian. So there you have it. Those are the items that I got from the Sword of Might grab bag. Uh, I wholeheartedly do not recommend you spend money on the grab bag. Uh, you can use the $200 or the $100 or the $50 that you would spend on their grab bag, and you can just go get something you actually want. Because that's what this really comes down to, is you're just going to get random things, and they may not fall within your interest range. Um, and that's really unfortunate because if you look at this, uh, you can actually tell that there's not a single item that really falls into my primary interest range. And that's a little bit disappointing. Now, I knew that kind of going in, that I probably wasn't going to get, you know, all medieval European swords that were battle-ready. I had no expectation of that, but it's at least worth noting uh, that your money is better spent getting the thing that you want rather than gambling it on items that you might get and go, oh, I guess that's kind of neat and never really want to do anything with. So there you have it. $200 sort of my grab bag. Don't recommend it. Find something else.